Well, thank you, everyone, for coming into this nice hot room and sitting down, taking a break with us. Um, I know it's been a great day. You guys have been doing a lot, hopefully contributing a lot today, and uh, getting involved with WordPress as a community. That's awesome. Um, today, we wanted to talk to you. So I'm Mark, and this is Kate right over here. John should be making his way down, hopefully when he gets a chance for those of you who are waiting to see him. Um, but we wanted to talk about um, visual data using the WordPress API a bit. I'm a designer at Automatic, and so I'm not a developer. The most API stuff really kind of, kind of goes over my head, but, um, but I find it fascinating nonetheless. It's, it's going to open up a lot of doors with a lot of new ways that we can use WordPress. Um, so that being said, if, yeah, so rather than visual data using, right, what are you building with WordPress is kind of the question I wanted to pr propose to you. Um, oftentimes, we think of WordPress as, there we go. So WordPress a lot of times looks like this, right? This is recognizable to us. Um, we have WordPress, we add a theme, and we've got some plugins, and we create one of these things, right? Uh, an online store, a blog, a website, or por portfolio. Um, we're familiar with this. This is what it's always kind of been about and what it's grown to become. Um, but, and we know WordPress is kind of built on this stack we're familiar with as well. MySQL, PHP, HTML, CSS, and and we've even got some JavaScript in there, which is really cool, right? Um, but what if it looked more like this? Like, what if, what if WordPress was something that you just did all this stuff with, right? Like, it was this foundation by which you built some really cool stuff. And I really think the API opened that up for all of us with 4.7, right? The API was introduced. Now we have, where, where are we at, 28% of the web? Will you guys know, yeah, on WordPress? I mean, these, these sites, all the ones that are upgraded to 4.7, we can connect with for the most part, right? We can pull a lot of that public data. We can learn about things and share that data with each other, um, with communities, other communities. Um, so rather maybe than what are you building with WordPress, what are you building on WordPress would be the better question. How are you using this? We, we're getting to an era, right, where devices are so versatile, um, the internet of things, um, people are on the go. How, how are we using Word, WordPress to engage those lives everywhere that people are moving? Um, making it a part of their life, helping to get the job that they need done, done, right? How are we using WordPress to do those things? Um, one, one way I just kind of wanted to share with all of you, if you have cell phones or laptops, try going to this URL right now. Um, open them up. It's got a question there for you. What is the most important part of a website? In one or two words, Leave a comment, OK? I told you I'm not a developer. I'm a designer. So OAuth is over my head. And if anybody wants to explain that to me in detail so that I would understand, I'd love it. But I couldn't quite get past it for this. So what I did is I opened up comments on this blog post. And that allows anybody like you to leave a comment. And then I can pull this data through the API. So I'm sorry I'm like walking in the way of everybody. But uh, yeah, just wpuxtesting.com forward slash WCEU, OK? Leave a comment. One word, one or two word answer. What is the most important part of a website? You guys feel comfortable? I see, still see some typing away. And in, in English, if possible. Oh, is connection? Oh, we're in the best room for that, aren't we? Like the basement, right? Yeah, boy, I didn't plan that too well. <laughs> John, come on up. Come on up. 
Yeah, so I, is, it, is it happening? Has anybody been able to post anything? Because if no one has, then we're, uh, this demo is going to go. So, what I could do, let's see if I could get. Yeah, so, oh boy. As it comes through, yeah, yeah. So you know what, if it's not happening for people, we're going to miss some visual data. So, um, but I can talk about it. Let me know. If it goes through for anyone, raise your hand. Give me a shout out. All right, two people. We've got two comments in there. Three, four, five. Yes, it's happening. That means less people are, you could go shut off your cell phones and let the others jump on. Um, so let's see. So if I refresh this page, we should start seeing something, some data showing. Um, and let's see how this works. And of course, that's going to take a second. Um, so what I'm doing, though, as a designer, not a developer, so those of you who are developers, don't laugh too loudly at my code. But um, I'm using uh, the API in WordPress and something called processing. Has anybody heard processing? All right, one, two, three, four, about four people. Processing is, a, is an open source language for uh, visual graphics. And um, I'm actually, it's built on Java. I'm actually using the JavaScript version of it called P5JS, if anybody's heard that. And um, so, whoa, there we go. OK. All right, let's clap. Like, that's yeah. in the basement, right? In the basement, we got some data going. OK. So these are comments from you all. And uh, we got them showing up. I'm just pulling, basically, the comments from this post ID um, using API. I'm um, organizing some global variables. I'm preloading the, the uh, JSON file. Um, and then this is where processing kind of happens. They've got a function called setup where you kind of set up your canvas. And that's what I'm displaying this stuff on. Um, and then they have this function called draw, which renders everything on the can canvas. And the function draw will, will loop and repeat itself, but I called a uh, no loop function up here, so or method, so that it doesn't, and we can just look at the data. But um, but what I'm doing is I'm taking these comments and um, looping through them. I'm grabbing what the words are, how many people might have commented the same thing. We don't have that happening yet, and um, displaying them randomly on the screen here. So we have visibility theme more speed, content, communication, UX, security, speed, speed. So that, oh, secured, UX security speed, I believe. And then speed and more speed. It'd be great if I looped through the array, right, and looked for the common words, yes. I tried to put content as well, but it said it was duplicated, so I couldn't. And you couldn't post it. OK. Well, there's a problem with uh, my setup, probably. Um, using comments open like that uh, from the same I IP. Yeah, mine is complaining that I'm posting too quickly. Oh, oh. <laughs> there you go. OK. That's a good, that's, yeah. That's, yeah. Catching you spammers, right? You spam. Just kidding. Just kidding. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so, so what, I, what I was hoping for is a few comments that might have been the same and um, that made it through. Uh, the graph for the bubbles would change color and size based on based on that. So it's just displaying some visual data. It's real basic in a very rudimentary form, just to show like there there really is an ease of use with the API to do something super simple. And I think that's important to understand for all of us because, as I mentioned before, like we could do some really cool things with this. We could build stuff that people haven't really thought of yet, right? Like, let's not get stuck in the mind frame of blog, website, commerce, and portfolio. Let's expand that. What else 
can we build on WordPress? That's going to attract a lot of people. We're implementing a lot of JavaScript and stuff. Let's, let's do something. And that's why like, Kate is invited here to also speak to you about some of this, which, which she'll go into more detail. But um, my answer was user need. I didn't enter it in, of course, but that would be my answer to the. Uh, um, so as I mentioned, the REST API, there's great documentation on this. Um, Ryan McHugh uh, and um, Kadam here as well, they're working on getting the word out about the API and sharing it, making it understandable for everybody, giving examples. Um, P5.js is the other software I was using. So, um, yeah, that's kind of me. That's what I did. I like to do this stuff. I like to elaborate more into it. I'd love to answer any questions at the end. But I'd like to introduce Kate, who's a lead of the mobile team at Automatic. And she's going to go into about the mobile a application using the APIs and how that all works. As I mentioned, being mobile with this, right? Using WordPress. Hi. How are you doing? Great. Yeah. <laughs> We're better now you're here, John. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, you know, when I was talking to Mark about this, um, you know, one of the ways that mobile fits into it is that for mobile, I need to be louder. You want me to move this mic? Is this better? Oh, okay. So I need to project. Okay, so all right. So for the um, so when Mark and I were talking about this and how these things fit together, um, one of the things that came up is that with the mobile apps we've always built on WordPress, right? And so every WordPress.org site was in some way a backend, right? That the mobile app would talk to and communicate with, and you know it's always super fun to debug something that is working on somebody else's machine, right? Um, and so this is why we're really excited for the REST API, especially V2, where we're really hopeful there'll be authentication, um, because it has the potential for us to really improve our mobile experience if we can drop XML on our PC. So WordPress as an, uh, an open source project, you still can't hear me? I, okay, I'm just going to come and stand in the middle. Ah, oh, the camera's the right there. Okay, I'm not going to do that. Um, <laughs> I really don't like to be videoed. Um, <laughs> now's a great time to mention that, right? Um, so WordPress as, can you hear me now? OK, so great. Thank you. So WordPress as an open source project has been this thing that people extended in all these like fascinating and exciting ways, right? Um, but we don't build the app like that. Like the app is really a client of every WordPress site. And it is, whilst it is open source, um, and it is GPL, and people could fork it and make their own incredible thing. Mostly, we haven't seen people do that. Um, and you know, when we look at like really great open source projects on mobile, mainly what we see are components, like pieces of apps that get used in multiple different applications. Um, and we've been doing some work in general on our architecture lately, and a big part of that is moving things out into components so that we can share them with the community and hope that they'll find the components kind of more exciting to build on than they did like an entire application. So I think you know one of the challenges with the WordPress mobile experience is that we've really been trying to serve the 80 percent, you know, kind of this vanilla use case of people who just want to post blog posts or, or have like a, a relatively straightforward site well. Um, and we want to give them a great experience, but we do do our best to, to serve everybody else. Um, but if you wanted to build something more niche, you'd probably create something really different, right? Which is where the components could be really, really helpful to other people. So earlier this year, we shipped a complete rewrite of our network stack on Android, which is called Fluxy. Um, and what it, it does is it abstracts the networking layer complexity. And so the app talks to .com, it talks to Jetpack sites, it talks to .org sites. Um, and now all of that is abstracted into one place, which we call Fluxy. And so it's easy for anyone to build on any different kind of WordPress site without worrying too much what that site is. Um, and there's also a demo project, which is called Instaflux. So it is, I'm told it's an Instagram clone, but it doesn't have filters. So can it really be an Instagram clone if there are no filters? Uh, 
And so hopefully this is a much simpler project that people could take and build on and do some experiments. So another component we're super, super excited about is called Aztec. Um, so Aztec is our all native text editor. Um, so our current solution was a hybrid one and there were some performance problems, there were some kind of irritating and, and intractable bugs and you know, Aztec is brought as much closer to the metal, so it's all native, it's faster, it's more performant, it has accessibility improvements. And you know, again, it's like it's an HTML text editor and it's just like a component now. So other people could also use that in their applications if they wanted to, provided they were willing to adhere to the GPL. <laughs> Um, so if you want to try it, it's in the beta, but it will be opt-in to the production apps very soon. So one of the things that Mark and I tried was we had this kind of cool, so there's also processing for Android. Processing is not just in Java, it's also in JavaScript and it's on Android. So we thought this was super exciting and we decided to combine it with Flux C to kind of see what we could create there. And we learned some things that I'm going to share with you. So the setup is a little bit challenging um, because Fluxy expects a level of complexity in the app that you know, processing is trying to hide from people. So processing tries to make it easy to make a very straightforward one screen app. And you know, when you're using something like Fluxy, your expectation is that you have this need for like a pretty complex networking stack, right? So it expects you to have a lot more of your app there than you really do with a processing app. Um, we generally discovered that it was overkill for just reading and visualizing data. Like you do not need, <laughs> you do not need it for that. Um, but we kind of started to think about some really interesting ideas for like maybe you could run a generated photo blog, um, where you know processing would take images that you'd taken, and do interesting things with them, and then post it straight to your blog. Um, and I kind of like love the level of indirection there because processing was created as a tool for artists to make it easier for them to learn to code um, or easier to create digital things. Um, and you know, when I think about like processing and Android and Fluxy, I think also about Lady Gaga. Does anybody else love a Lady Gaga? Matt, I know you love Lady Gaga. <laughs> so Lady Gaga has this concept that like life is art, right? And so I'm kind of like, well, is there any way, better way to kind of for regular people who aren't Lady Count Gaga to create art than on their most personal device and to kind of introduce some randomness and some um, digital creativity with processing and then just share it on any WordPress blog that they want? Okay. John. I'm sleeping, <laughs> but I'm not. Okay, so uh, who was there in the uh, design contribution day section? Thank you for coming. I just want to note that uh, I, I, this is my second word camp, and I noticed how there's a lot of designers who want to get involved with this kind of work, but don't know that this world exists, quite frankly, because they live in designer world. And in designer world, you can't get jobs anymore if you just do design. <laughs> so like, oh my gosh, I really wish I could do this coding thing, but I don't know where to go. So if you think long term, the opportunity I imagine for WordCamp is it'll be, there'll, there'll be hundreds more designers showing up uh, at these spaces. Um, I don't think it's unlikely because of the opportunity that exists in a place like this where coding and culture are combined. Um, I like how our lanyard says, code is poetry, you know, as Matt has been forwarding for a long time. Um, I've been doing this for a long time too, uh, talking about code as a kind of a humanistic type of thing to do. And I wanted to bring up something super old. Can I use your computer? Is this what's driving this? Yeah. I want to show you something from the 90s, because it's always good to go backwards in time, because that's how we understand things. Uh, I want to show you, uh, uh, back in the 90s, I was trying to teach designers how to code. And people didn't like me then. Um, nothing like me anymore right now. But they were very angry people back then. Um, let's see, design my numbers, Vimeo. Let's see, look for there. OK, here we go. So this is something 
This is something I made a long time ago that I'm glad there are things like this, but I wanted to show people the power of computation because who, who remembered when you could type in programs in BASIC? BASIC? Ah, oh, older people. <laughs> Good, you see? There was an era where you'd buy the computer and you'd turn it on and it did nothing at all. It just was so worthless. And it had no software, right? So you had to write software on it because it would just blink at you. And that was a beautiful time because everybody had to program to know how to use the computer. But because it was right there in your face, you had to learn programming and you couldn't make a complex program. It was limited. And so people from that era were advantaged because they had this simple experience to write code. But by the 90s, it became very hard to code. Manuals that were 32 pages long were becoming 200 pages long, were becoming five books of 200 pages long, and then it became virtual, so you couldn't tell how many pages there were, <laughs> right? And so I saw in the 90s it was impossible for somebody who doesn't know all this culture of coding to break through. So I proposed this system called Design by Numbers. It had a very simple uh, architecture. On the one hand, you have a display area like there was in the 80s. Um, and then you had a programming area, you know, very simple program. And then you could just run. So this was the basic idea. You'd have a little canvas, an area to write your code, to sort of play the thing and stop it. OK, this is very simple, right? Um, and also, I constrained the system very tightly because I, at the time, was a, a little bit too, who's Swiss here? Anyone Swiss people here? OK, like that. So I was a very Swiss-oriented designer, which means I wanted to control everything. So I controlled everything. So you could only draw in a 100 by 100 pixel box. You could only draw in black and white because all of the gray values were 0 to 100. Why? Because nobody understands why 255 is an important number. So 0 to 100, 0 to 100, it was beautiful. I think it was my masterpiece. Um, it was so constrained. And in that little bit of square area, I wanted people to type in commands. Because at the time, everybody was using Photoshop. And I wanted to tell people that you could write code like this. Again, this is a long time ago, so it's hard to imagine what this was like. But type in code. And I had very simple commands. Um, let me show you in one minute and the 30 seconds uh, what I wanted to show. So you can enter a program you know, with a comment. You can set the paper color to 0. You can set it to paper to 100. It's black. You can set paper 50 which is gray. Paper 20 makes it lighter. So this is kind of like getting you kind of in touch with the, the paper command. This is the first command. Paper. Paper 0, pen 100. Uh, and then you draw a line. I wanted to say that people didn't understand that the pen command doesn't do anything. It just makes you hold on to the pen, but you can't draw. Only when you enter numbers can you draw. Then I would show how if you set a variable, you could have a remote control to a line. So by changing B, I can move the line up and down. And I can move it up and down with just one edit. So teaching people how to use variables. And then I place it into a, 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 a block. And I place it into a block and adding a repeat. I wanted to show people that it's so easy to draw 20 lines. It's so easy to draw 100 lines. Because the average designer couldn't draw that fast. So, and also by just adding a little bit of paper in between a, a repeat, it became an animation. And the an animation with simple mathematics could be changed with just a little bit of twist. And so the intent of this work at the time was to show people how simple a program could be, but how complex the out could, how outcome could be. And this was in the 90s. In the 90s, people said, oh, designers will never have to program, <laughs> ever. You know, go back home. You know, go back to the cave you came from. That was the mentality. But 
what happened was um, I, 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 I had uh, in 2001, oh, actually in 1998, uh, I had these two people working on my research team uh, as graduate students. One person was named Ben Fry, and the other was Casey Rees. And Ben Fry and Casey Rees uh, really liked my system, designed by numbers, but thought it was a bit constraining. You know, John, people want to drop things bigger than 100 pixels. <laughs> you know, John, people want to make things in color. And I said, no, 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 no. 100 pixels. 100 gray, color gray. That's all we get to do here. So what did they do? They did the best thing possible. They didn't listen to me. And they went off and made a better version of it called Processing. And Processing is a graphics system that manages 2D and 3D coordinates very lovingly with tons of libraries uh, built as a community starting in 2001. It's an international community of people who love to write things that graphically process things either for television commercials or for art installations. And, it, and, and as Mark was pointing out, um, it's gone to, to JavaScript. It's gone to Android as well. So pretty interesting ecosystem. But it also exists over here. And so what I like is what is happening is that the two worlds are coming together right now with the work that Mark and Kate and her team are trying to weave together. Why is it important? It's important because I believe in diversity and inclusion. We bring two things together that are different and push them together. What happens? Something new happens. I know in Europe you have different chocolates here because you have Cadbury and we have like uh, Nestle's or whatever, but do you know what the peanut butter cup is? It's peanut butter and it's chocolate together. Mmm, so good, delicious. You put the two together, it becomes more delicious. So I'm hoping that processing and WordPress together can be that proverbial deliciousness. Why is this important? It's important because of this thing that I noticed uh, when I was in the venture capital world, I was, I was looking at money. You know money? It's money, everyone's money. It's a very powerful thing. And I was looking at different startups and who was acquiring them, specifically startups that were founded or co-founded by designers. And I saw a pattern where acquisitions look kind of like this, but in 2009, it went like this. It just kind of like, it was that proverbial up and to the right. All these designer co-founded companies were being acquired, and it's happened all of a sudden. And the reason why it happened, I linked to a very simple fact. The fact is that this is when mobile computing took off. And when mobile computing took off, what happened is you had smaller screen real estate, you had higher user experience expectations, and many large companies like Google did not have that competency inside their company. So they acquired a lot of these designer-led startups, which were unusually good at creating experience for mobile, right? It's kind of obvious, sort of in hindsight. Now, why is it important? It's important because all of you have this thing called a smartphone, right? You have a smartphone? Well, maybe some of you are iconoclastic, so you may have a Motorola StarTech, I don't know. I know some of us ride, you know, we try to be like kind of cool. Ah, I don't use a smartphone. I have, a, I have like LED display, or whatever. Um, but some of you, those of you who have a smartphone, um, you probably have this thing. Have you heard of this thing called Facebook? Have you heard of it? Have you heard of this thing called Facebook? This is very popular now, you know. Uh, very, but, but have you heard of this thing called Google? Yeah, you heard of that. Interesting. Um, you know, and there's a few others, but um, uh, what's interesting is that of the top 10 mobile apps used on smartphones globally, 
uh, of the top 10, eight of them are owned by Google or Facebook, which is kind of amazing, isn't it? Um, and then if you imagine how many, how, how many <laughs> millions, if not billions, but how many millions of dollars are spent by Google and Facebook to be on your home screen, to be in your smartphone. Um, that's a lot of people. It's a lot of innovation. It's a lot of resources. So meanwhile, upstairs in our contribution day section, you know, you'll hear oftentimes mobile. Mobile consumption patterns have changed everything. How are we doing there? And the fact is that, as you can see by this graph, companies that began here before 2008, 2009 are all disadvantaged. Platforms designed before this era are all disadvantaged because they have a legacy of desktop computing as the core. Whereas all platforms that started afterwards have less of a legacy problem because, bless you, because they began with different stacks. They began with mobile as a, a simple factor. So when you ask yourself, why is it that at WordPress, the ecosystem, it's hard to catch up to anyone who's over here, number one, this is lots and lots of euro, lots and lots of money uh, over here. This is like a mad amount of money, number one. And number two, the timing was off. So if WordPress, if, if, if Matt Mullenweg, like, were cloned himself, <laughs> sort of like, that's, that's kind of not, that, that's not correct. If Matt were to sort of arrive again over here, it would be a different system, right? But it's not. That's a fact. We can't go, we can't change time travel, et cetera. So we have two facts working against us. But that's okay, because what I believe is that we have people who are still the believers, who think they can somehow beat this system, number one. And number two, though, we need a way to innovate, to find solutions faster. That's why what is so neat about bringing the processing people, who really, I do believe, wish they had more things to do. Watch out, don't, don't tell them I said that. <laughs> but, but they're all out there, and they don't know about us. And they have amazing, uh, they, have, they have all the VR, AR stuff figured out. They have all the data visualization figured out. And if they dock into our system, I find that kind of exciting. Um, because it means it'll be, we'll be able to start to see different innovations on the mobile platform with this thing. Is this, am I connecting with you? It's kind of hard to, because I'm not sure if I'm saying things right because I'm, I'm supposed to be asleep right now. <laughs> is that working? Is that, is that so, so big takeaway, this is, a, this, is a, this is a problem, or said differently, it's an opportunity. <laughs> and then said differently, this thing that happened, processing for Android, Talking to Flux C, connecting is a landmark achievement. This has happened in the last few days. It's kind of like trying to connect two parts of railroads together. No one knows it now except all of you here in this room. <laughs> Don't keep it a secret. <laughs> Tell people. So I'd like to first send energy and love towards Kate and Mark right now. Do you feel the love? It's, again, it's still in the dirt. It's still a seed. It hasn't popped out yet. But I imagine that a year from now, we'll see processing experiments using mobile, talking to the WordPress ecosystem at scale. Wouldn't that be neat? I'm looking forward to that. All of you are too. Good. OK. Uh, peanut butter and chocolate covered, everything covered. OK, good. All right, any questions? Yes, go ahead. So you mentioned how designers uh, did well out of the move to mobile. As we move to maybe a screenless um, Thank you. situation, yes. who's, who's the equivalent uh, skill set to propel forward? Who is the, oh, who is like, the? As designers, 
Yes. So glad you asked this question. The people that know the best are people who cannot see. I mean this in all um, all my sincerity, because we just discovered that you can talk to something and get it to do something. People who cannot see do that all the time. So I believe that this group of people who we've largely ignored, you know, besides some accessibility things, as we bring into the foreground, are going to teach us new patterns. Um, so it hasn't happened yet, but it will happen if we are inclusive of those groups. Yeah. I mean, we all know about Alexa and how funny it is when, you, when you're around Alexa, you can't say Alexa. <laughs> you know, so you know, it's not perfect yet. Yeah. Questions? Okay. Everyone's afternoon. No coffee. All right. <laughs>